wanted to talk to you at some point today about the calorie in versus calories out. So maybe now is a good time, um, good time to talk about that. So can you explain to people why it's a bad idea? What happens that, you know, everybody thinks we need to eat less and exercise more to lose weight. And it's been failing for the whole of my life, which is, you know, getting on a bit now. And we still haven't learned that lesson. It, it fails everyone. It, it's back to if it worked, we wouldn't have an obesity epidemic because people want to be slim so badly. If all you had to do was to eat less and or do more, everyone would be slim. It is without question. Everyone would be slim. And what people think when they believe that theory is that the body in some way is going to act as a cash machine for fat. So you eat less and the body is just going to say, oh, there you go. Um, there's a, a couple of pounds off your waistline or off your thighs or something um, that will make up the deficit. They make no allowance for the fact that the body does and can adjust. And the body will do that before it will release fat because that's what the body does. We have evolved since Australopithecus Lucy, whatever pathway of evolution you want to take, however far back you want to go whether it's over 100,000 years or 10,000 years or 1,000 years, whatever you want to do, we have evolved to hang on to our fat stores because that has been what has kept us alive. So the first thing that happens when you start a calorie-controlled diet and you eat less is that you get hungry. So the minute you start on a Monday morning, all you can think about is food. You become obsessed with food because you're hungry, because you feel deprived, because you want to eat more, because every wiring in your body says don't eat less. Eat, eat what you want coming in, eat as much as you can that's around you, uh, forage and all the rest of it. So the first thing is that you want to eat more and that will defeat many dieters. Um, you can trick your body for about up to six months, which is one of the things that came from that Ansel Keys experiment. So you will quite often see that people go on a calorie controlled diet and they lose weight over a period of about six months and then they tend to plateau and then they start to regain, which is exactly what happened in the Minnesota starvation experiment, because the body gets to the point that it just resets equilibrium. And you get to the point that the amount that you used to, your intake that used to help you lose weight is now an intake that will encourage you to gain weight. You have reset your metabolism so effectively that you now can't eat what you used to eat. And we cannot continue to be hungry. It's just one of the human conditions that we will not endure we will not suffer it is intolerable so you do get to the point that you find that you're craving particular things and you just get hungrier and hungrier and um i wrote two books that were very very pertinent to this one was called why do you overeat when all you want is to be slim and then the other one was called stop counting calories and start losing weight because one of the other things that happens when you eat less you eat differently. So when you eat less, you choose food on the basis of its calorie intake. And that means because fat approximates to nine calories a gram and carbohydrates and protein approximate to four calories a gram, you eat more carbohydrate and less fat. So it means you'll eat a dry rice cake instead of eating some oily fish. Now the oily fish actually had the nutrients that you needed for your overall health and well-being. So if you keep eating the rice cakes all day long, your body says, I haven't got my fat soluble vitamins. I haven't got my B vitamins. I haven't got my calcium, my zinc, my copper, my iron. You still need to keep eating. So carry on eating until you bring me those nutrients that I need. But because you're on this calorie controlled diet, you don't go for the oily fish or the lamb or eggs or full fat dairy products or natural yogurt. You don't choose those. You might have a packet of sweets because that's 100 calories and you can make it last for a couple of hours or whatever. Nutrient choices go out of the window when you start a calorie controlled diet. So there are so many things that happen within the body, in your mind, the bad choices that you make, you start going down a really slippery slope of harming your health. And there comes a point when the body just says enough's enough and you start regaining and you're in much worse shape than you were before you started that calorie controlled diet. How people think the body doesn't adjust, I, I, I don't even know what happens in your brain that you think the body is just gonna say, there you go, there's two pounds of fat because you created a deficit. You know, your periods stop, you get cold. 
the heating system gets turned off, you get colds and flu because your immune system has been compromised. There are so many ways in which the body can do less if you eat less and it will do that. So what you're really saying is we turn down a lot of our, the maintenance of our body systems. So we stop doing sort of fundamental processes that are essential for health um, while we're trying to conserve energy. And that you have hit on such a key point there, because one of the other things that people don't seem to realize when they say a calorie is a calorie, a calorie is not a calorie. So what you've just touched on there, let's take a typical female requiring approximately 2000 calories a day. Now you will know about three quarters of those are involved in what we call the basal metabolic rate. So if that woman were lying in bed all day, um, very ill, the body still needs about 1500 calories just to maintain body processes, building bone density, fighting infection, um, keeping the, the body working and so on. Now, if that female is moderately active, then she probably only needs about 500 calories on top, which is where you get the 2000 calories. Now, here's the kicker. The carbohydrate calories can do something for the energy part of that equation only. Now, there are some energy parts to the BMR, keeping us warm, keeping some things moving around the body, but they are by far the minority part of that BMR. So the vast majority of our calories needed on a daily basis need to come from fat and protein because Nutrition 101 tells us that fat and protein can do the repair and maintenance. They can do the building bone density and um, preserving muscles and all the rest of it. Carbohydrates don't do that. Carbohydrates are for energy and energy alone. So when our dear governments try to encourage us to have at least 55%, and they'd love it if we had 60% to 70% of our diet in the form of carbohydrate. They flipped it on its head, if you can see that. So they're saying have almost 70% of your intake in the one macronutrient that you don't actually even need because fat can meet your energy requirements just as well as carbohydrate can, just um, ha how, you, how you happen to fuel and what fuel is available in the body. So they're telling us to have the majority of our calories in the macronutrient that the body doesn't need and the macronutrient that the body can't use for basic health and maintenance. So not only is our extremely high carb, low fat dietary advice making us fat, it's also making us sick. And I think it's a really important consideration for people. Um, the difference between, you know, calories for energy and then, and then it, like food for health and nutrients, as you just pointed out. And the other aspect of that, I think, is the stress of trying to cut calories. You know, I mean, that must really raise cortisol and um, sort of like, you know, adrenal hormones. And then that's going to have its own driver as well, because like you said, we don't want to be hungry. And so we're just going to be driven to eat. Yeah, yeah. And I also, I mean, part of the early research that I did into this looked at things like food intolerance. And the other thing that you do, you do on a calorie controlled diet, and I know this from personal experience, is that you try to get the biggest bang for the buck. So let's say you're on a 1200 calorie a day diet. So you work out what you're going to have at breakfast. You, you're going to need a snack in the middle of the morning because you're so hungry. Um, and it might be a 50 calorie pot of yogurt which is high in sugar and low in fat or it might be a piece of fruit which is high in sugar and low in fat or it might be those um, fruit gum sweets that you can just make last a long time and then you get to lunch and it might be a tub of um, coleslaw that's got all these nasty ingredients in but at least it's got a calorie count on the side that looks okay to you and when you've worked out how to get the biggest bang for your buck you you just keep having it every day why would you change your breakfast when you've worked out that you can have dry rice cereal and a piece of fruit or something for 150 calories or whatever stupid allowance you've decided you can have that morning? Um, and then when you've worked that out, you, you have it every day. And food intolerance, I'm not talking food allergy, um, which is the one that's life-threatening and you might have a nut allergy. That's not what intolerance is. Intolerance is defined as having too much of, or the reaction to having too much of the same thing too often. And that's exactly then what happens. So you then find that the person who's been counting calories has actually developed an intolerance to 
the shredded wheat that they're having in the morning or the tomatoes that they're having in their salad on a really regular basis or some particular cracker that they've had very, very regularly or the, the sugary sweets. And they get to the point that they actually want more of that substance because the thing about food intolerance is it very, very closely connects into food addiction. So you start off having the fruit gums and then you want even more fruit gums. The one packet isn't enough. You want a second packet or maybe even a third packet, another packet in the evening. Then you get to the point, if you don't have the fruit gums, you actually feel bad. You, you've missed out on having them for that day. You start getting withdrawal symptoms. And then you're into full-blown addiction because at the point, if you don't have your morning muffin on the way to work or you don't have your cappuccino in the morning and you realize you've started to feel bad, you are already at higher stage levels of addiction. You've got your body to the point that if you don't have a particular substance, you're going to feel bad rather than that substance is neutral for you or even makes you feel good, which um, nutritious food should do. So the whole connection between overeating, food addiction, food intolerance, restriction, calorie counting, there's a jigsaw there that, that I try to unravel in my 20s, which is absolutely fascinating. And some people listening to this will resonate with that, that they got to the point that they were eating certain foods to the exclusion of others. Um, I, I ne why would I ever want to eat salmon and green beans when I could have rice cakes and packets of fruit gums? And that's all I, I wanted to eat. I didn't want to eat the healthy stuff. Like, mm. I, I, I really didn't understand why it is that we eat food, which is, is so fundamental. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we eat food for a lot of reasons. You know, we eat because we feel hungry. We eat for social reasons. We eat for stress relief. We eat for that addiction purpose. And not many of us really understand the role food actually plays in our body and for our health. So that's why it's so great to have you here talking about some of this stuff. Yeah, 